Balance your personal perspectives with the absolute perspective. Posted on October 31st, 2011. As a human being, our mind has a tendency to have many human or humane perspectives. However, when we're totally ignorant of a higher or absolute perspective, it's possible for our humane perspectives to become a source of negative thinking. For example, a person who is against non-vegetarians because he or she thinks that non-vegetarians bring suffering to innocent animals through killing them is basically holding this as a humane perspective. But if he or she does not have the maturity to recognize that from an absolute perspective, all expressions have a value, then it's possible for this person to hold some highly toxic or negative thoughts about non-vegetarians and thus keep a strong vibration of hatred going within. If you really want to let go of some deep-rooted negative thoughts that find defense or support in your humane perspectives, it's important to develop the maturity to be able to balance your personal perspectives with the absolute perspective. I used a very mild example of non-vegetarians in the above explanation, but I could well have used a more challenging example like terrorism, and it would still hold true. What is the absolute perspective? It's true that the energy that you are is pure positive or divine, as some people like to call it. But it's just as true that this energy wants to experience physicality in different ways, in diverse expressions and myriad of experiences. If this energy only wanted to experience the expressions of love, it would never have created a lion that needs to kill a deer for its food. It would never have created carnivorous animals. When the lion's brain was created, the intent was to experience the reality of hunting down a prey for food. Also, when this energy intended to come forth as a deer, the intent was to be a prey and be food for the lion. The lion has all the adaptations for a hunter, and the deer has all the adaptations for a prey. This is how the intent of this energy took form as these two different species of animals. This is again a very mild example that I'm using to convey the absolute perspective. From a humane perspective, it looks as if the whole process of a lion chasing a deer and killing it is extremely horrible or violent, and some vegetarians would wish that lions would learn to eat sweet grass to bring an end to the violence in the animal kingdom. But this is existence. But this is existence is a play of experiences, and all expressions are for the experience of it. There is only this one energy, and it's playing off itself. There is no fairness or unfairness when there is only one energy or one being. Who is being unfair to whom if there is only one energy taking different forms? The hunter and the prey are the one being, allowing the experience of the hunt. When you see it from the perspective of this energy, you know that nothing is really harmed because all forms are temporary manifestations and are recycled, and physicality just allows this energy to indulge in the ride of experiences. If your mind has some anger against such expressions, just ask your mind what type of reality would it have created if it was in the place of this energy. While answering this, make sure you account for the fact that sameness and expression will lead to a dead end of experiences quite soon. A reality without diversity cannot allow for a gamut of preferences, sensations, emotions, or feelings. If all expressions were somehow rooted in expressions of love, there would be no diversity and hence no experiences. You won't even know what love is if love was the only possible expression in physicality. If this energy only wanted to experience its natural vibration, it could as well have just been born as a rock and left it at that. A lot of humans think that this world would be a great place to live if all humans were born Mother Teresa, with no capacity for any hate-based thoughts. From a humane perspective, this could well be true, but from an absolute perspective of this energy, there will be no expansion because this sameness will just end any diversity in experiences or expressions because everyone will have the same point of view and hence the same preference. Without a diversity in experiences, there is no point of physicality from the perspective of the absolute. The question of suffering. I get a lot of questions from people about why. If this energy is pure positive, would it create a mind that has a tendency towards violence? Or if everything is made of pure positive energy, why are there rapists and abusers? Or why are children born into realities where there is no food or water? Why does this energy not create only realities of well-being and joy? 
or why did it allow a capacity for negative to be present? And I find that a lot of these people are too taken in by the fear-based vibrations of these thoughts to even contemplate a deeper perspective to all this. It's true that this energy is pure positive, but its intent is not simply to experience pure positive expressions alone. It also wants to experience expression that may seem inhumane from a human perspective, just like the lion and deer example I gave before. You can take the lion and deer example and pretty much cover all expressions of violence and exploitation out there in the human realm. I read once that some men have YY chromosomes or double male chromosomes that causes excessive aggressive patterns in their mind. And it seems that such men cannot help being violent and have a tendency towards abusing others or themselves through violent behavior. You can now ask, why did this energy, this intelligence, allow the possibility of such a creation? The answer is simple, for the experience of it. Like I mentioned in my post, the value of negativity, the only way a pure positive energy can ever know itself is through the mirror of its opposite. If there was only light, you wouldn't know what light is. Darkness is a required perception in order to know light. It takes some maturity to really align with this absolute perspective. A lot of people would prefer to not see reality as it is and have some narrow ideas or perspectives about it. When you don't have the absolute perspective, it would be very difficult for you to ever find a balance or stability in your mind towards positive because your mind will constantly align with chronic negative thinking where it argues about the wrong happenings everywhere. As a human being, you need to fulfill your expression. And if it means that you move towards dissolving some negative behaviors in others, so be it as long as you understand that negative is a perception of your human mind. And from an absolute perspective, all expressions have a value. Were negative realities meant to be created? It's true that all negative realities, like abuse, terrorism, starvation, and forms of physical and mental violence that we observe in human consciousness from a humane perspective are created as a reflection of the negativity, fear and hatred, in the human mind. Just like a lot of negative and violent acts take place among animals in the jungles, owning to the makeup of their animal mind. But the question is, why does the mind have the capacity to think negative? Why does the mind have violent thoughts? This possibility in the mind for violence is itself a creation that came through the intent of the energy that created the human mind. So it was the intent of the energy to experience a mind that has the capacity for violence, for fear, and for hatred. Why would it intend this? So that it can experience the knowing that such expression allow. Like I said before, it's not the intention of this energy to only experience the one-track expressions of love but to have a diversity in its frame of experiences through various expressions. It's important to first realize that the physical brain is the only organ that has the capacity to have interpretations about reality, be it an animal brain, insect brain, or human brain. This brain will perceive certain acts as negative and certain acts as positive. This variety in perception is what allows a variety in expressions. So whenever you judge an event as negative, always remember that it's from your human perspective that you do so. From an absolute perspective, all expressions allow for unique experiences and thus have a value. Humans were intended to be the way they are, just like a lion was intended to be the way it is. So should I ignore the negativity I see around me? The purpose of having an absolute perspective or deepening your awareness it's not so you become a recluse who no longer wants to involve in the world of physicality or who, who wants to do nothing about the negative situations that's present in one's reality, but so that you can really allow a holistic perspective on everything and thus allow a more wholesome and wise action to come forth in response to the situation that you're observing. When you move from fear and hatred, you are no different from the person or situation you're fighting against, who you perceive as being negative or wrong no matter how righteous you feel about your stand. It's possible to move from a deeper wisdom when you allow yourself to rest in your wholeness instead of being pulled by the n narrow interpretations of the human mind. People who have the maturity to balance their personal and human perspective with the deeper, absolute perspective always move from a place of wisdom. 
in comparison to people who simply follow through on their belief in the rightness of their human perspective. The former allows for a conscious movement, while the latter is an expression of unconscious identification. Before you condemn the evil in the outside, take the time to realize that all creations, in essence, came from the same energy that you are. In a simple sense, evil was created so that this energy could have the experience of dissolving the evil and know its nature as love. The original intent always came from the energy before anything became physical. Being a conscious human being and living in alignment with one's natural vibration is a better way to live from a human perspective. A conscious human being definite a uh, conscious human being definitely has a totally different experience of reality compared to a human who is totally mind identified. But I also understand that from an absolute perspective, all expressions are fine. Nothing is more elevated or lesser than the other. Conscious living in a human being just allows a different flavor of experience in the wholeness. It may seem like an elevated place of being from a human perspective, but from an absolute perspective, it's just another experience, as good as any other experience. In fact, it was suffering that allowed an awakening of consciousness to take place in a human in the first place. So is suffering not needed for this energy to know itself? Before you condemn suffering, be sure to understand the value it has from the absolute perspective. Awakening allows a human to let go of negativity that causes his or her suffering, but it was their previous suffering that was the catalyst for them to have the experience of awakening.